Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to Mass Effect. Uh, Alright, so... Let's go back down. Back down in the elevator. <clears throat> Before we get on the ship. Gaddis, if you do not mind me asking, how do you feel about hunting a Torian? Saren is either a traitor or a madman. Taking him down will restore the good name of Turians everywhere. Things are different among my people. There are so few of us. We are expected to be loyal, even when it is difficult. Hmm. Tali is so goddamn cool. Tali is the coolest character in Mass Effect, period. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, look at her, yo. She's such a gangster. Wait till you guys see what, see what this team can actually do. Not not just this team, but just Tally. Tally's a uh, friggin' crazy in combat. Um, oh yeah. Oh, damn it. The fuck? <laughs> the menu for, uh, the rapid transit is a little bit too fast. Um... Let's go see if that Nasana girl has that mission for us. Now, I absolutely goddamn know that this girl has a mission. So let's go speak to her one more time. And then Captain Anderson said that we need to go talk to uh, another dude to find out what he knows at the uh, tower. We're gonna make a stop at the tower as well. But first, I just want to see if this Nasana girl actually. I don't have time to talk now. God, I'm very damn. busy. <laughs> I know you have a mission. We are going to do your mission, girl. <laughs> no matter what I have to do, we will do your mission. Come on, open up. <laughs> So we just need to go to the tower real fast. Uh, Presidium. Uh, tower. Yeah, Captain Anderson told us to come up here and talk to, uh, another guy. Can't remember homie's name, but... This guy over here? I think it's this guy. No, I'm waiting to speak with one of the Council's assistants. Congratulations on becoming the first human Spectre Commander. I'm certain you'll be up to the challenge. I appreciate that. My name is Admiral Kahoku. It's about time the Alliance got one of our own in with the Spectres. We need people like you to deal with our problems something wrong, Admiral? I'm getting stonewalled by bureaucratic assholes. <laughs> Nothing new. Maybe you can help me, Shepard. One of my recon teams was investigating some strange activity out in the Traverse. We lost contact yesterday. Now I can't get clearance to check it out. Suddenly it's a restricted area. But that doesn't apply to you, Shepard. Spectres can go anywhere they want. You could find out why my team dropped out of contact. I'll find them, Admiral. I appreciate that, Commander. I was running out of options. I'm going to stay here and see if I can find anything out through official channels. Won't hold my breath, though. I'll upload the info on where my team was last seen to your ships. Maybe you can get some answers. Sweet. Commander, any luck finding my recon group? Captain Anderson said you had information on Baines. Not as much as I'd like to. One of my crews found him. Frozen stiff on board a derelict vessel. The missing recon group? The one I sent you to find? They were scouting the system we found Baines's ship in. You should have mentioned this earlier, Admiral. Baines is already dead. It's too late for him. I'm only concerned about my team. Someone has to find them. Please, Shepard. I'm counting on you. I got you. <clears throat> okay, so Baines is actually connected to the missing, uh, the missing team. 
Not sure exactly how, but I guess we will find out. Um, no. Uh, let's see something. God damn, this game is so cool. <laughs> To the ship, you guys. Coming up in a report later today, Emily Wong investigates corruption on the oh, Citadel oh, hell and yeah. uncovers a full-blown crime syndicate. Hell yeah, that was us. Nice. Emily Wong must have submitted her reports on our findings, you guys. Oh, shit. Goddamn criminalizers. Won't stand for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, here we go, you guys. Let's get this. Oh, hell yes, you guys. Woo. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination right, we're get in progress. Decontaminated. <laughs> Decontamination in progress. I heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. You know? Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. Captain Anderson should be the one in charge. It's like I'm stealing the ship from him. Yeah, the captain got screwed. But it's not like you could have stopped it. Nobody's blaming you. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. You got anything you want to say to the crew? Now's the time. Shit, eh? <laughs> Yo, I love how, um... Like, where she has her scar on her right cheek, when she speaks, you can actually see that it, it slightly affects her right eye a little bit. And sometimes her right eye doesn't open as much as her left eye, and it's a little bit... It seems as if her right eye is a little bit slow compared to her left eye, which is actually just unbelievable. I mean, this game is fucking crazy, yo. So, the intercoms opens, anything you want to say to the crew... Uh, need to be honest with them. Let's keep it short. Let's be honest, you guys. Let's get the team behind us. This is Commander Shepard speaking. Hell yeah. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't going to be easy. Hmm. Humanity must do its part, you guys, huh? For too long, our species has stood apart from the others. Now it's time for us to step up and do our part for the rest of the galaxy. Time to show them what humans are made of. Our enemy knows we're coming. When we go into the Traverse, Saren's followers will be waiting for us. But we'll be ready for them, too. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped, and I promise you all, we will stop him. Fuck yeah. Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. The Captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. See how her, she, yes, she constantly blinks with her right eye, like a lot, while she's like talking? Ah, oh, that's amazing. Mass Effect is out of control, you guys. The viewport. So all these little things that are around... Uh, they're simply just little things that uh, will be added to your codex. So, like if I... So that little thing that I clicked on there, that gives us uh, thrusters, you know what I mean? Like all these little things that I search, we can actually come into our little uh, dictionary here and actually check out what it was. So if you remember in the ending of the last episode, we checked the Normandy's thrusters, and that actually gave us this. A mass effect drive core decreases the mass and bubble space time around the ship. Blah 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 blah
<laughs> All right, so we got more information on the uh, missing Marines from Admiral Kahoku. Let's check this out. Go to the Sparta system in the Artemis Tau cluster and look for the recon team. Uh, uh, let's check our main... Uh, okay, no new information on main teams. Give me one second, you guys. Come and get up. Come and get up on the couch, my lovely doggy. Jump! Oh my god, you're the bestest jumper there is. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to get my dog on the couch. Uh, Joker. Commander, something you need? How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. Damn right. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. Hmm. I'd like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I'm the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Hell yeah. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. I'm sorry, Joker. I didn't even know you were sick. You mean... You mean you didn't know? Oh, crap. Okay, I've got Vrolich syndrome, brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! Shit. It's very dramatic. But I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Damn. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance. <laughs> you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. <laughs> Shit! Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. <laughs> Plus, I love to make little children laugh. You're dodging the question. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker, mm -hmm, and it stuck. Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I worked my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not going to hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the year, I was the best pilot in the academy, even better than the instructors, and everybody knew it. They'd all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. <laughs> One guess who was smiling at graduation. I need to know more about this Rolex syndrome if I'm putting my ship in your hands. Yeah, of course you do. It's an extremely rare condition. Nobody knows exactly what causes it. Genetic, maybe. It's treatable, but there's no cure. They classify my case as moderate to severe. I was born with over a dozen fractures, hip, thighs, ankles, my bones were already breaking in the womb. God damn. A hundred years ago, I wouldn't have survived past my first year. Lucky for me, modern medical science has turned me into a productive member of society. Hmm. I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. Let's talk about something else. Whatever you want, Commander. How'd you end up joining right. the Alliance? If you're looking for an inspirational tale of the crippled kid overcoming impossible odds, you're gonna be disappointed. My mother was a civilian contractor working for the Alliance. I basically grew up on the Arcturus station back when they were building up the fleets. Spend all that time around Alliance ships, there's a good chance you'll end up going to the Academy. Shit, eh? He was literally... I have to go. This man was literally born inside of a ship manufacturing plant. <laughs> the best man for the job, you guys. Alright, let's continue. Continue to explore. Uh, there's the Navigator Presley, guys. Speak to me, sir. Doesn't seem to want to talk right now, I guess. Nobody's in here. Okay. everybody who's oh, it's just a couple of random people oh it's cut out hey man anything you need commander 
Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? Look at her eyes, eh? Wow. I've wasted enough of your time for now. Goodness me. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. What's your opinion on the last mission? I don't see how we could have done things any better. At least not without getting to Eden Prime sooner. And we were on the scene faster than any other Alliance ship could have been. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Alright. Seems Kaidan's a little bit busy. Let's leave him to it. Oh, might as well look around the corner. No. <laughs> Never know. Oh, nice. Sleeper pod, you guys. Do, 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 do. See, like, we just got that sleeper pod thing. Now, if I go into here, ships and vehicles, crew considerations. That's uh, probably in this crew considerations. Yeah, cabins give each individual 10 cubic meters of space. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, this game is absolutely wild, man. There's, like, you could sit here reading shit for hours. And yeah, the first time that I played this game, you bet your ass I, I sat there reading everything. Oh, nice. So we got our main, uh, a meta station right there. There's Dr. Chuck. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. I, I wanted to uh... travel as... But humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the time. Well, you know the lieutenant. <coughs> I've never worked with him before this mission. Tends to keep to himself, then. Yeah. Maybe because of it. Goodbye, yeah, we, Commander. We've already uh, talked to her about all of that shit. Looking for anything else? Where's everybody else? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the longest elevator in any video game. Where's everybody else? That's my question. Like Tally, Ashley, Garrus, Rex. <laughs> it's like they're not even here, you guys. Uh, it's a mystery. Uh, that looks like Garrus over there. Or Tally, one of the other. Oh, there's Rex. Hey, man. Nice ship you've got, Shepard. Thanks, homie. What can I do for you? What's your story, Rex? There's no story. <laughs> Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. You Krogans live for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. <laughs> heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? Huh. I suppose it isn't all the same. <laughs> I don't expect you to understand. But don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. I got you. I was just making conversation. I wasn't trying to upset you. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Solarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far.
every Krogan is infected. Every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? Hmm. You ask a Krogan. Would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. Dang. So long, Rex. Shepard. Hmm. Alright, so we got all the different lockers here to equip people. Here's Ashley. Commander. What's poppin'? What's your opinion of the last mission? I kind of wish you got there sooner, Commander. No offense, I appreciate the rescue. I just wish... You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit. Yes, ma'am. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. The Geth are perfect ambushers. They don't move, they don't make noise, they don't even breathe. They have flashlight heads, ma'am. I'll make sure it doesn't <laughs> They have flashlight heads. And they do make noise, man. The Geth fucking click and make these gr crazy groaning noises. They're like... Do you have a few minutes to talk? One-on-one? -on -one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. You got it. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. Alright, so it seems Ashley's pretty br busy as well. Everybody's kind of busy doing their own thing. Was that a person behind there? Okay. Looked like there was a person standing there for a second. What's up, Garris? Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. You got it, buddy. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSAC. Have you worked with the Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSAC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. C6 handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside C6. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without C6 headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? Straight. I wasn't trying to. I understand, Commander. I always gotta go about things the right way. Looking for supplies? I might be. Uh, oh yeah, we already uh, talked to him about that. Let's see what you got. You bet, Commander. Alright, so he should have... Uh, Quite a bit of stuff after a while because um, the more licenses we get, the more equipment he's going to have. Oh my god, yo, he has an Avenger 3. What a nice assault rifle that is. Actually, that's quite a bit of stuff, man. Not gonna lie. How do I see, like, oh, okay, okay. Alright. Tally! Your ship's amazing, Shepard! <laughs> I've never seen a drive car like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. <laughs> I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. The Normandy's a prototype, cutting-edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tugship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. <laughs> 
I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a quarry. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million quarians in the flotilla, yeah. and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. <coughs> China. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials? In practice, the conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. Sure. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. Damn. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million death thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So the death share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. I was literally just about to say, like a hive mind. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. 
they cannot share sensory data or information. Oh. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I'm probably oversimplifying. The Geth are incredibly advanced and complex creations. All you need to know is that they get smarter when they gather in large numbers. As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Whoa. As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. I don't see what's so bad about those questions. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. Jeez. Uh, Tally is uh, a little bit above my intelligence level. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we're at 32 minutes, so we'll continue this conversation at the beginning of the next episode, I guess. Thank you guys so much for coming out and watching this. This was a massive thing. If you ever leave a like on the video, maybe even subscribe to the channel if you could. I freaking love you guys, and I wish you guys the total best. Hope you guys have a freaking awesome rest of your day, and of course, I'll see you guys in the next episode. So, have a good one. Bye-bye.